So um, holding the gains now, um, I thought um, we can have a, a presentation on sustainability and how, uh, how to sustain this piece of work. But I thought, no, let's do something creative. Let's do some, a bit of serious fun, if you've heard that uh, uh, term. So uh, serious fun. So what we're going to do is that, uh, so uh, have you heard about TRIS, anyone? So TRIS is the Russian acronym for uh, Theory of Inventive Problem Solving, right? Uh, a lot of industries do, do use this, uh, and we can go and Google what exactly this is. But if we're going to use this technique to, it's kind of a reverse engineering, right? Uh, and we're going to use this for our sustainability. Um, and I'm sure in your DHPs you have a lot of sustainability models and a lot of things, but we're going to try something different, which is a bit more fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some controlled uh, uh, creative destruction first, right? Sounds exciting <laughs> after lunch. So what are we going to do? So now we all know that um, at the end of the day, sometime in future, we will hopefully, we will, I'm very optimistic and confident, we will have a bundle, and then we will be talking about implementation and uh, uh, and sustain and spread of that bundle across all the DHBs, right? That's where we, we're heading to. So the major challenge for us would be how would we sustain this? Uh, all the improvement, all the things you're doing at, uh, at the moment and trying to come with bundle, how are we going to sustain? Yes, we will implement, we'll spread. How are we going to sustain this? So what we're going to do is that we'll try and, uh, let, let's come up with some ideas and plans. How are we planning to sustain this using this uh, uh, um, uh, methodology? So what are we going to do, right? The first part of it is, uh, let's talk about the first bullet only, right? So in your tables, what you need to do is, you need to come up with ways where this bundle is not going to work, right? Think completely opposite. Make sure this bundle absolutely fails, right? When you talk about spread and implementation, it is not going to work. As soon as you put it in, it's going to absolutely fail. Make sure it reliably fails, right? This bundle, whatever bundle looks like, it's not going to work, right? So. Come with creative ways and um, you know, be brave, that's fine. So how you can fail this bundle from uh, sustaining in your DHPs. In, so you, can you come up with a list of things which you think, uh, so think opposite, right? Not how to sustain, how to fail the whole thing. So we're going to hear from all the tables here. Uh, we're going to do lots of things. We're going to um, have no interest and in try and do too much all at once and give information overload with no education, no leadership, no sponsorship, no funding. And um, we're going to stop collecting data, Prem. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there's, there's going to be no reward in it for any staff, you know, and um, we're actually going to stop prescribing opioids. <laughs> Hi. Right, we thought that we would start with a one-size-fits-all bundle, and we're going to start it with the most resistant group over Christmas. <laughs> we're going to let the CE know that it's going to cost a lot of money, and then we're just going to do it. We're going to ban information around testing and feedback loops. Um, we're not allowing people to talk to each other. We're going to discourage discussion. And we thought that actually to really make it work particularly well, we're going to tell them they have to use it and the nurse managers must roll it out by themselves. <laughs> One of our thoughts was very similar to that. We thought we would get the management to send an email to all the orthopaedic surgeons telling them they have to do it to save money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, general list, same as a lot of other people, so like per communication, um, give them lots and lots of new forms to fill in, lots of extra tasks, um, additional to what they're already doing, duplicate work they're already doing, um, don't explain why we're wanting them to do this, what the real purpose is, don't ask for feedback or when somebody insists on giving you feedback, dismiss it completely, um, don't provide any resources, don't provide any leadership, don't show any sign of passion about the subject. Um, 
implement lots of different things at the same time. Don't bother collecting any data. Um, and Billy suggested that we just go shopping now and we just <laughs> spend the afternoon shopping. <laughs> Uh, we thought we'd stop auditing, stop communicating, stop education to patients and staff, remove all resources, laxatives, prunes, Kiwi Crush stamps and guidelines, stop listening to patients and staff, absolve responsibility for outcomes. We're going to double the opioids and have no restrictions on discharge prescriptions and send mixed messages. Ditto. <laughs> We've pretty much got everything. Um, uh, we say uh, a lack of appreciation for any goals achieved. Um, and basically, yeah, no engagement at all <coughs> from anyone. Oh, and uh, stop operating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, look, they're similar. Um, we, we, we'd be negative we'd create barriers, we'd be ineffective communicators, we'd be arrogant, we'd be way too ambitious, we'd be unclear about our aim, and we'd lack a... Pr How do you come in at the end of all these brilliant suggestions? Because we're fiercely competitive, we're going to do everything that you've all suggested and therefore we'll succeed in failing. <laughs> So we thought we would change the happy face pain chart to all happy faces. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ask the orthopaedic SMOs to do all the parallel opioid um, laxative charting. They're the only ones that can do it. Um, no incentives or rewards, ban all dietary fibre. Bring back oxycodone, remove all opiate restriction prescribing. In fact, um, what else did we say? Yes, opioids for everyone. We, we, we withdraw <laughs> all other pain relief and tell, tell people what to do. Right. Okay, we're gonna get somebody non-clinical to write a policy and put it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put all patients who are admitted have laxatives and then they'll end up in isolation with their um, query um, stomach bugs. We're going to take a 20-step assessment process, 140-page policy. We're going to make it a national health target. We're going to introduce stable, <laughs> stable style toilets, and we're going to. <laughs> we're going to we're going to create expectations with fear. It's really good. So the second part of the exercise, so we have identified how to consistently, reliably fail this bundle so it's not sustain. The second part is just to go back and see out of all those lists which you have created, what is actually happening now? What is the similarity between the worst case scenario and what is actually in your DHPs now? Is there any similarity? So I'll just give you five minutes to go and reflect that uh, that's the worst case scenario which you have identified. Is it something which is happening now? I think uh, what I was hearing, a lot of things which is, which is actually the practice in terms of guidelines and communication. So I believe probably you agree with me that there are a lot of things which is quite in the similar phase, isn't it? Even though we're thinking the words, but talk about communication, talking about uh, policies, guidelines, and many of the things you just uh, um, shared in the, in the, in the <coughs> previous feedback. Uh, so considering all that, so, so see where we are in terms of uh, our sustainability, right? We still have work to do with, because all those things still is there in, is there in our DHB. So, so my question is that if we're going forward with bundling sustainability, and you know the challenges around sustainability, um, can you come up with an action plan in terms of what are you going to do uh, to address some, because you know that that's how it's gonna fail, right? So what are you going to do uh, to sustain 
this hard work, this last one year of work with everyone together, how are you going to sustain? Well, in each DHP, you have, might have different um, challenges culturally and uh, depends on people. But so what is your plan of sustaining this piece of work? So if you can go back to your team and DHP and brainstorm and create a, a plan for yourself, because sustainability is not about starting something at the end when we have a bundle. Right? And this is where the, the day one, when we looked at sponsor, I said that we need to start engaging. So we have to start quite early when we talk about sustainability. Sustainability is not something which we do at the end. Right? We, we start quite early, actually right from the beginning. Right? So you know what is going to fail this. Right? And so go back to your team and create that action plan because you're going to start implementing soon as well. So for implementation and spread, how are we going to sustain, create a plan? Um, based on your DHP, um, be it communication, be it uh, data collection, or be it uh, guidelines, policies, because that's how it's going to fail. So uh, we've got around 15 minutes to do that, and we'll come back and hear what are some of the different ways we can sustain this. Thank you, everyone, for... Uh, the, for thinking uh, how to sustain. We've got around six minutes left, so uh, why don't we hear some feedbacks from uh, each DHP in terms of how they're planning to sustain uh, this piece of work as we move forward. So, we should we start? Southern and, Southern and Auckland. No plans to sustain. You're still with on the point one. <laughs> yeah, they, you haven't created it. Oh. Right. Okay, but. So um, one of the ways we looked at sustaining the prescriber decision support tool is to include it in the RMO handbook. Um, for the rollout, um, Trevor will include that in his twice yearly house officer teaching but that's probably not sustainable in the long run. And we talked to house officers about making an app for their phones as well, and that probably won't be as useful because you only really need to access it a few times to get used to the different pathways in the mm. tool. So RMO handbook as well as um, a lanyard of the flowchart would be the way we'd go for sustainability. Right. Southern, okay. <laughs> okay, how is Hawke's Bay and Waikato planning to sustain? Um, we were just talking from the Waikato perspective. One of the big issues, I think, is um, poor communication is one of the big things, I think, that could easily sort of ruin the introduction of anything, really. Um, and what we've identified is the need to go back to our organisation and go back to the executive level of the organisation um, and get more commitment um, to the collaborative and what its ideals are um, and understanding um, the importance of their leadership in helping move uh, and create or help sustain um, the introduction of a bundle of care. So communication is going to be the key Communication focus for is critical, yeah. For, okay. for the executive level, yeah. John this morning offered to write a letter to our DHBs, perhaps after learning session three, a generic letter to all DHBs wouldn't go amiss, asking for increased resource and support. Is that the way to sustain? Okay. No, no, so we need that buy in now, otherwise, six months down the road, we're going to be shot. Right, okay. Um, from sustainability, I think integration is going to be really important rather than clip on. So 
we like the idea of working with our communications department and having like a monthly cycle of updates using something like the posters that they use over there, but just a heads up. We were looking at, um, somehow we need to integrate this into the high level nursing service plan. So there's a high level and it feeds back down again. We want to liaise with our clinical coders to make sure we get the information. I think County's Manukau talked about that and that's going to be important. Um, key people for us will be the clinical nurse specialists and the clinical nurse educators are involved in lots of education. So again, looking at the education they provide and where we can integrate some of this into the work that they do. And um, raising the profile of our guideline at the house officer orientation and the house officer teaching that we're already involved in. Right, that's really great. <coughs> Good plan. <coughs> Uh, for us, we just want to start uh, having, adding it to the orientation uh, booklet for new RMOs. And then what we are going to do, we are going to add it to the quarterly uh, audit, internal audit at the hospital. So we will have it added to the health and quality audit, so we will be able to follow up on the progress. So mm. it's just to keep track on where we're going. Right. It again mm -hmm. goes back to that communication and uh, uh, engagement side of uh, uh, the piece. Yeah, this, this will be included in uh, the orientation. Right. So what we're trying to do is, if the, if the, because we have a high turnover at West Coast, so what we want to make sure of is having guidelines and orientation uh, oriented so that any new staff member, whether an RMO, a nurse, or a clinical staff, will be able to, be, to get on board directly, and then will be able to do the audit by the quarterly surveys. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Counties. Um, so we've got um, a slightly different approach. We, we were talking about the fact that there's, in effect, three different cogs um, of a wheel turning, one of which is um, kind of like the national collaborative, that cog turning, and then the project group with their own um, potential um, agenda items and then making that sustainable um, at a floor level um, um, within, our, within our project areas. And um, so one of the key things for us was um, looking at the why um, for the people on the floor, mm. uh, particularly the... Um, predominantly the nurses who are actually leading a lot of the projects. You've got the leadership from uh, the charge nurses, but unless the why is understood by the people who are actually doing the work and implementing some of the changes, then we can't get the buy-in. So um, how does it become business as usual? Um, how, how do we encourage um, understanding of the, um, of the why principle and um, also, uh, what's the last thing? Oh, yes. Using the patient stories to make that why clear so that hopefully um, this isn't just seen as a project or a short-term goal of the Health Quality and Safety Commission, but actually impacts the patients in the long run. Right. I think <clears throat> you touched on a very important point, which is why. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to talk about the psychology of change, which demonstrates system profound knowledge, but that's a very key part of that uh, um, change. So why is a very, um, very important question, which uh, probably will pick it up sometime later. Um, Elizabeth? Yeah. I want to pick up on the points that have been made because I think this is a fundamental. I mean, we're the believers in this room and we were the believers before we went down the pathway because we all contributed to, you know, agreed to partake. So to make it sustainable, it's got to become part of our culture and part of our expectations. So that has to happen, as you say, at the three levels. And I, I think Billy's idea is brilliant because I think... You know, when you were putting up about your data collection, we've all got our own data, but there is nothing more motivating to people than seeing themselves as an outlier when there is data. So you can do it within your organisation, but we need to be able to compare everybody. And OK, we've, we've done different projects, but we still should be sharing that because the different projects show you you're an outlier if you haven't addressed it. And medication's the crisis 
today, and it's certainly going to be the crisis of the future. And we really have to make the most of this opportunity to make sure that we really change expectation within organisations. And it does come down to resourcing. You know, it's got to be business as usual, and it's got to be an expectation that not only when you're doing it an induction for house surgeons, but the orthopaedic registrars and the orthopaedic surgeons are expected to understand they need to take this on board as well. Because otherwise you're hitting at the bottom and you're not addressing at the top. Absolutely, and I think uh, what we're sharing at the moment is few elements of that whole sustainability uh, plan, and I think uh, uh, we, we have to think much broader in terms of what sustainability look like. How would you, you keep sharing? So there are so many things to consider, but this is just uh, on the top of your head. What are the key things you want to address? But a tick point, yeah, it has to be much wider, and we have to think a bit more globally. Right, lakes and Kaplan Coast. Yeah. Um, for us, uh, also the issue or what we want to focus on more is explaining what is in it for you know the staff um, at the front line, and um, the nurses in particular. I think we need to get maybe more on board. Um, we wanted to also ensure sustainability through handovers for you know the next incoming house surgeons because we you know at in, at the end of the three months we see a really good um, uptake in um, the change ideas and then it sort of is lost again with with uh, new junior doctors coming through and. Um, I think it really is also very important to feed back to uh, the frontline staff, doctors, nurses, when we've actually achieved really good um, progress or made good progress and, and do it in a face-to-face -face conversation and, and personal, I think. That was our conclusion. <coughs> um, so we just talked about um, continuing to measure and feedback so it's visible uh, that, you know, Hopefully, once we get those, um, get the reduction in harm that we're keeping it there, and we've just kind of talked about ways around for all of the stuff we do, um, whether or not we could make that more visual and simple for people to see at a glance. Um, certainly, at our DHB, we don't have an easy way. To, I don't think to kind of have a look at it, and in that way, we can kind of tie tie that to rewards, and maybe even make it. A, an indicator, or talking about having maybe a, some kind of, if, if from this work there becomes other work that we can measure and start using it as a kind of a clinical indicator bundle, because that's not something that is done, um, where you can show how well you're doing. Um, really, but the, I think the important thing for us was that it was simple and easy so that people on, like, like someone said, it's all about the culture the culture that it's important to everyone and quality is important to everyone and so that all of these graphs and stuff are easy to understand because certainly I know that when I first started looking at these things I was like, whoa, I don't even know, you don't even want to look at them. So just making it simple for those people that you know, aren't involved, like you say, we're the, we're the believers in this room, but just making it easy for people to see what we're doing and as you say, why we're doing it. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to try and mm. work on. Great. Yeah, we can have just a few more DHPs. Anyone else? Sorry. Um, we were going to have that our lanyard will be provided by the service manager in surgery when the new RMOs come through, so that becomes um, normal practice. And uh, train a uh, part of their CE session, the early stage of the rotation, provided by the pain team in pharmacy and also have an online learning package for nursing staff that's supported by our nurse educator and nurse specialist uh, to, to support and ensure that it's compulsory for them. Hmm. Right, shall we, because um, we're into your break time, so uh, Sandra, one more. I think we've got to be really careful that we don't focus on top-down interventions, and I think we've got to learn the secret of frontline ownership, which is what TRIZ is about. We've certainly, in BOP, um, battled with our hand hygiene um, 
performance, and it wasn't till we actually put it out and using um, the releasing time to care methodology and benchmarked within individual departments that we got the staff engaged and actually what can we do to make this better. I see our project group's ongoing um, role is going to be developing the tools to support that process rather than, you know, putting out policies or putting out tools. It's around supporting the staff to develop what they need to do the job that they want to do. Um, so I just would really give you, you know, you talk about engaging nurses, you talk about how to get everybody on the same page. It's not till they understand what the size of the problem is in their department that they will become engaged. When we started to see the up in the in our graphs was when we did an engagement exercise with the ward around, this is what your baseline is, what are your ideas for improving that? Um, so I'd really encourage you to take that back to individual departments. I think frontline ownership is a key for any sustainability. So <clears throat> thank you all. I think we're just short of time. Um, so thank you very much for that. And I think this is just a starting point for, uh, for that discussion. And uh, we will talk about it in the coming months uh, as we move forward. Now, one thing I want to make clear here is that we, uh, we, we did PDSA yesterday, and we talked about implementation today, um, measurement for sustainability today, and we talked about sustainability. Now, um, but we, want to, we, we, want, we should be clear that at the moment, the focus is testing, right? All this, what we did is just to learn that what is going to happen, where are we going, and we, we are equipped with that knowledge and awareness what is going to happen. But the focus at the moment is testing. We, we, we are still not at implementation stage even. Right, we've got a few ideas which is coming up, which is really exciting. Some of the graphs are showing uh, really good uh, improvement in special calls, but we are still at a testing phase. We don't still have a lot of interventions uh, there. So just want to bring that focus back, that when we go back, focus, on, uh, focus back on the driver diagram and testing. And we will get there eventually with the remaining things, and we'll have a lot of conversation in the next three or four uh, months. So with that, that's the end of uh, the session. Thank you.